morning everybody, welcome to the shop. This morning I've come out to start working on a sign I've been asked to make, and I thought I would share the process that I'm going through with you guys. The sign is going to be hung in a conference room. The sign is going to be six feet long, about 18 inches tall, and cut from Corian, or solid surface countertop material. It was converted from a PowerPoint slide to a screen capture, then using Inkscape, I converted it into an SVG, or a scalable vector graphic. With a scalable vector graphic, I was able to import it into Fusion 360, where I turned it into solids and did the, the rest of the cam work. So this material is super heavy. I would say this six by 30 inch piece probably weighs between 60 and 75 pounds. It's also kind of cumbersome, and I don't want to try and cross cut it on the table saw for fear of it binding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some one inch foam scraps underneath it and leave it lay right where it's at and cut it with a skill saw. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to slice off about 18 inches off of the bottom of this six foot sheet of, of uh, solid surface material. Um, this is a half a sheet, a full sheet's 12 feet long. The red was insanely expensive, um, so we're being very careful. I've got all the letters nested together and they fit in about an 18 inch piece of this. I couldn't buy less than a half a sheet, I tried. With this 18 inch piece of stock cut, I'm putting it onto the CNC machine using a technique that I've played with in some of the sample cuts and I'm really liking. So far it is everything that people have said it is. I'm using a technique that combines masking tape on both surfaces. So I'm putting a piece of masking tape down or several pieces of masking tape down on the machine work surface, matching pieces then on the piece of stock, and then using super glue or cyanoacrylate between the two to hold them together. I have used this for the sample letters that I cut while we were determining scale, and it has worked really super well. So here you see me uh, setting up the height for the cutter, and we're gonna hit the go button. Runtime on this job is about an hour and 40 minutes. Um, I don't have dust collection set up yet. I'm not in a big hurry. I'm still learning the machine, and I wanna be able to see what the cutter's doing and how it's performing. As I get more comfortable, I will get more interested in adding uh, dust collection to it. So in the meantime, you'll see me vacuuming bits up every now and then and checking on it. I'm using a two flute rapid spiral upcutting solid carbide cutter. <laughs> solid carbide two flute spiral upcutting cutter. And uh, it's made for uh, the woodworking industry, but works great in solid surface material as most woodworking tools do. I started by putting that cutter in the CNC and making some test passes and developing a recipe, which for my machine is about 14,000 RPM and about 32 to 34 inches a minute, and it makes a real nice cut. Because so much of what we're doing by pro is profiling, um, I have set up the cam so that it cuts the profile leaving 10 thousandths radially and then I make a cleanup pass after that. Um, whenever you're cutting in a, in a groove like that where both sides of the cutter are trying to cut, um, I experience a less than optimal edge finish. But if I come back and I'm only cutting on one side, I get that nice cleanup cut. It looks real nice and I have no sanding or no, no after machining work to do. They're just ready to go right on the board. If all went right, at this point I'm 
working on taking the letters and the rest of the material off the machine. So it should have been about, so it's been about an hour and 40 minutes. Um, I've adjusted and played with the speeds and feeds a little bit as it was going, but my recipe is pretty much spot on. And the letters now are all completed. There's a little bit of an, a little bit of a burr on the bottom edge. Um, so I'm real happy with that. The tramming I did on the head has been uh, really awesome and uh, taking care of everything I needed. So here's the letters and I'm going to sort of lay them out on this uh, on a piece of the backer board and that's where we're going to end this video. The next video we'll talk about making the backer board, mounting and do the assembly of all the letters. We're going to do some more relief carving but for now this is where I want to stop this video. So if you enjoyed the video, click the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, click subscribe and the little bell next to it and you'll be notified when part two of this video series comes out. I'm currently shooting the series that's gonna come after that. I think it's gonna be about three parts on building a phase converter. So another good reason to subscribe if you haven't. See you guys later, thanks for stopping by the shop.